In the dense woods of New England in the 1840s, tales of strange, malevolent creatures were whispered around campfires by both Native Americans and white settlers. These creatures were called Pukwudgies, small, troll-like beings said to possess the ability to disappear, lure people into danger, and wield tiny but deadly weapons. At the time, these stories were dismissed by many as mere superstition, but for those who ventured too far into the forests, the Pukwudgies became a very real and terrifying threat. It was the summer of 1842 when the first signs of the Pukwudgies' resurgence appeared. Natives from the Wampanoag tribe and a group of white settlers from a nearby village began to report strange occurrences. Campfires were mysteriously extinguished, food supplies vanished without a trace, and eerie laughter echoed through the trees at night. But it wasn't until people started disappearing that the fear truly set in. The first to go missing was a young Wampanoag hunter named Eliwalusset. He had gone into the woods to track deer, but never returned. His people searched for days, finding only his broken bow and a trail of blood leading to the edge of a steep cliff. Not long after, a settler named Samuel Tate vanished while chopping wood. His axe was found embedded in a tree, but there was no sign of Samuel. As the number of disappearances grew, so did the terror. People spoke of seeing small, shadowy figures darting among the trees, and some claimed to have felt tiny hands tugging at their clothes in the dead of night. The Pukwudgies, it seemed, were no longer content to stay hidden. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, a group of settlers and Wampanoag warriors gathered around a campfire, discussing the disappearances. They were united by their fear and a shared resolve to protect their families. Among them was Jonathan Parker, a seasoned trapper who had lived in the region for over a decade. We have to find these creatures, Jonathan said, his voice steady but his eyes betraying his fear. We can't let them continue to terrorize us. As the group made plans to search the woods the next morning, they were suddenly assaulted by a flurry of sand and dirt. Cries of surprise and pain rang out as everyone tried to shield their eyes. Through the chaos, Jonathan caught glimpses of small, humanoid figures with glowing eyes and wicked grins. Pukwudgies, someone shouted, but before they could react, the creatures swarmed. The Pukwudgies were relentless. They darted in and out of the shadows, stabbing at their victims with tiny knives and spears. Jonathan felt a sharp pain in his leg and stumbled, barely managing to stay on his feet. He swung his rifle like a club, striking one of the creatures, which let out a high-pitched shriek before vanishing into thin air. The group fought valiantly, but the Pukwudgie's speed and numbers were overwhelming. Jonathan saw several men and women fall, their bodies crumpling to the ground as the creatures continued their assault. Desperation took hold as he realized they were losing the battle. Fall back, he yelled, trying to rally the survivors. Retreat to the village. With great difficulty, the remaining settlers and warriors managed to retreat, their attackers fading into the night as quickly as they had appeared. They limped back to the village, bruised and bleeding, carrying their wounded and leaving behind their dead. The attack had shattered any illusions they had about the Pukwudgies being mere legend. These creatures were real, and they were dangerous. The village fell into a state of paranoia, with people refusing to venture into the woods and fortifying their homes as best they could. Despite their fear, Jonathan and a few others knew they couldn't simply wait for the Pukwudgies to strike again. They needed to take the fight to them. Jonathan, along with Eliwalusset's brother, Nutah, and a handful of brave souls, devised a plan to track the creatures to their lair and end the threat once and for all. Armed with torches, rifles, and determination, the group set out into the woods under the cover of darkness. They moved cautiously, every snap of a twig and rustle of leaves setting their nerves on edge. After hours of searching, they found what they were looking for, a series of small, hidden caves near the base of a cliff. As they approached the caves, the air grew thick with an oppressive energy. The group could sense they were being watched. Jonathan raised his torch, casting eerie shadows on the rock walls. They're here, Nudal whispered, clutching his spear tightly. Suddenly, the Pukwudgies emerged from the darkness, their eyes glowing with malevolent glee. The group braced themselves as the creatures attacked, this time with even more ferocity. The battle was brutal and chaotic, 
the confined space making it difficult to move. Jonathan fought with everything he had, his rifle cracking shots into the darkness. He saw Newtown engage in a fierce struggle with a particularly vicious Pukwudgie, their movements a blur of fury. Despite their best efforts, the group's numbers were dwindling. In a desperate bid to turn the tide, Jonathan hurled his torch into one of the caves, hoping to drive the creatures back with fire. The flames roared to life, casting a hellish glow on the scene. For a moment, it seemed like they might succeed. But then, a chilling laugh echoed through the caves, and the Pukwudgies redoubled their efforts. One by one, the members of the group fell, until only Jonathan and Nudar remained, back to back, fighting for their lives. In the end, it was too much. Jonathan felt a sharp pain in his side and looked down to see a tiny knife buried in his flesh. He fell to his knees, his vision blurring. Beside him, Nudal let out a final, defiant cry before being overwhelmed. As darkness closed in, Jonathan's last sight was of the Pukwudgie standing over him, their grins wide and their eyes filled with a triumphant gleam. He realized with a sinking heart that they had failed, and the creatures would continue their reign of terror. The village waited anxiously for the return of Jonathan and his group, but as days turned into weeks, hope turned to despair. Without their strongest defenders, the people of the village and the nearby Wampanoag tribe lived in constant fear, never venturing into the woods alone and always keeping a wary eye on the shadows. The disappearances continued, each one a stark reminder of the evil lurking just beyond the tree line. The legend of the Pukwudgies grew, spreading fear and caution among those who heard it. But the creatures remained elusive, always one step ahead, their malevolent presence a constant threat. Years later, the story of Jonathan, Nudaw, and their ill-fated battle against the Pukwudgies became a cautionary tale, passed down through generations. The woods of New England remained a place of mystery and danger, a reminder of the darkness that could lurk in even the most familiar places. And though the Pukwudgies themselves were seldom seen, the fear they inspired lingered on, a shadow that would never fully fade. For those who dared to enter the woods, the memory of the creatures was enough to keep them on edge, always listening for the eerie laughter and watching for the glowing eyes that might appear in the darkness. The Pukwudgies had won, their reign of terror unchecked, and their legend enduring. The people of New England learned to coexist with the fear, knowing that some horrors could never truly be vanquished. The woods remained their domain, and the shadows their hunting ground, as they continued to haunt the land, waiting for their next victims.